Every year, we have the privilege to honor veterans here at Norris Elementary School. We can never thank you enough for your service to our country and to its citizens. It is because of you that we are able to enjoy a life of freedom and have the amazing opportunities that we have as Americans. It is because of you that we should strive every day to be good citizens and to serve others in need. Thank you for allowing us to honor you in this small way. We are also very privileged to have Miss Mary Hammond that's going to be with us to share a story that's very special to us on our, ve on our Veterans Day. I'm going to turn it over to Jace Cotton. Please stand for the presentation of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the singing of our national anthem. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A veteran is a person who has helped protect our country by, by serving in the United States military. The branches of the military are the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Veterans Day is recognized on November 11th. That day was chosen for Veterans Day in honor of the ending of World War I. On November 11th, on November 11th, the day was originally called Armistice Day, but was later changed to Veterans Day. On this day, we honor the men and women who have sacrificed to protect our country and the freedoms they enjoy. Make sure you say thank you to a veteran every time you have a chance. We are excited to have our veterans back in the audience today. We are going to read all the names our students submitted to recognize their veterans. If you are in the audience, please stand to be recognized. Please hold your applause to the end. Ralph Atkinson. Atkinson served in the United States Army and is recognized by his granddaughter, Miss Davis. Steve Alstead, Airman First Class. Alstead served in the United States Air Force from 1965 to 1969. He served in the Vietnam War and is recognized by Natalie Alstead. Chief Warrant Officer 4, Heath Barrett. Chief Barrett served 16 years in the United States Army and served in the Global War on Terror. 
He is recognized by his sons Jackson and Colton Barrett. Sergeant Alan Bates. Sergeant Bates served four years in the United States Marine Corps. He served in OEF and is recognized by Eve Bates. Johnny Eugene Broadwater. Broadwater served four years in the United States Marines. He is recognized by Tara Nicholas. Jim Brown. Jim Br Brown served 10 years in the United States Navy. He is recognized by Lily Templin. Sergeant First Class Joshua Butler. Sergeant Butler is currently serving his 19th year in the United States Army National Guard. He served in Operation Iraqi Freedom and in Operation in Inherent Resolve. Sergeant Butler had a humanitarian aid mission for Hurricane Ike and Gustav. He's recognized by Addison Russell. Chief Warrant Officer the Second Douglas Birchfield. Chief Warrant Officer Birchfield is currently serving his 16th year in the United States Army National Guard. He served in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. He is recognized by Addison Russell. Corporal Fred Carroll. Corporal Carroll served 10 years in the United States Army. He served in World War II and in Korea. He is recognized by Chloe Carroll. Terry Kaywood, First Class Petty Officer. First Class Petty Officer Kaywood served six years in the United States Navy. He is recognized by Travis Kaywood. Technical Sergeant Spencer Chambers. Master Sergeant Chambers is currently serving his 12th year in the United States Air Force. He is Jason Haven Cotton's uncle. Sergeant Chris Connor. Sergeant Connor served six years in the United States Marine Corps from 1990 to 1996. He served in the Persian Gulf War and is recognized by Luke Connor. Corporal Dewey Copeland. Corporal Copeland served five years in the United States Army and served in World War II. He is recognized by Chloe Carroll. Sergeant First Class Herb Cross. Sergeant First Class Cross serves 27 years in the United States Marines in the National Guard. He is Haven and Jace Cotton's Pebble. Specialist Chad Crowley. Specialist Crowley served four years in the United States Army in an Operation Iraqi Freedom. He is Carly McBee's uncle. Zip Dancy. Dancy served three years in the United States Army 82nd Airborne Division. He is recognized by his daughter, Mae Dancy. Ron Daves. Daves served in the United States Marine Corps and is recognized by his granddaughter, Miss Daves. Robney Dalb, Senior Airman. Dalb served four years in the United States Air Force. He is recognized by Eleanor Mason. Paul J. Douglas, E-5. Douglas served eight years in the United States Army and served in Vietnam. He trained sentry scout dogs to hunt the enemy. Bounty on the dogs was more than the GI. He is recognized by Sarah Collins. Captain Joseph Fink. Captain Fink served 25 years in the United States Army and served in the Vietnam War. He is Patrick de Gersay's grandfather. Jacob Floyd. Floyd served four years in the United States Navy. He is Presley Floyd's dad. Lieutenant Commander Ted Foster. Lieutenant Commander Foster served 20 years in the United States Navy from 1965 to 1985. He served in the Vietnam War and was part of UDT-2 and SEAL Team 2. He is recognized by his grandchildren, Stella and Foster Baker. Robert E. Gentry, HM3. Gentry served in the United States Navy from 1968 to 1971. He served in Vietnam and is recognized by his grandchildren, Wyatt and Lainey Norris. Albert Gill, staff, wait, Gill served in the United States Air Force and was a flight navigator during World War II. He is recognized by Lily Templin. Staff Sergeant Chris Haley. Staff Sergeant Haley served a total of eight years in the United States Air Force, four years on active duty, and four years in the reserves. He is recognized by Ian K. Second Class Petty Officer Bill Hanks, E-5. Second Class Petty Officer Hanks served four years in the United States Navy. He served in the Vietnam era and is recognized by Meadow LaVue. Rob Hanks, HTFA. 
Hink served in the United States Navy from 1991 to 1992. He served in Desert Storm and in the, the Gulf War. He is recognized by Walker Anderson. Justin Hume. Hume served three years in the United States Navy. He is recognized by Chloe Hume. Tim Jennings. Jennings served 10 years in the United States Air Force. He is recognized by Reed and Benson McGow. Master Sergeant J Gary Johnson. Master Sergeant Johnson served 20 years in the Air National Guard and served in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. He is Nathan Johnson's dad. Robert E. Kentler. Kentor served 20 plus years in the United States military. He is recognized by Emerson and Charlie Irwin. Michael Kohler, E5. Kohler served three years in the United States Navy and a year and a half in the National Guard. He served in the Persian Gulf. He is recognized by his daughters Marlene and Michelle Kohler. David Kronbush, E6. Kronbush served in the United States Navy and served during SFOR. He is recognized by Dagny Kronbush. Elizabeth Kronbush, E5. Kronbush currently serves in the United States Navy since 2017. She is recognized by Dagny Kronbush. Daniel McBee, Second Class Petty Officer. Second Class Petty Officer McBee served six years in the United States Navy. He is Carly McBee's grandfather. Sean McGow. McGow served six years in the United States Army. He is recognized by Reed and Benson McGow. Thomas McNeely. McNeely served in the United States Marine Corps from 2003 through 2007. He served in the Operation Iraqi Freedom. He is recognized by Aiden and Alexis McNeely. Ed Meyer. Meyer served in the United States Air Force and is recognized by Avery and Landry Meyer. William Milton. Mr. Milton served in the United States Army in World War II. He is recognized by Maggie Dyer. George Maselli. Maselli served in the United States Air Force and he is recognized by Dominic Maselli. Bruce Norman. Norman served in four years in the United States Marine. He served in the Vietnam War and was recognized by William uh, Disney. John um, Andrew. Andrew served four years in the United States Air Force. He is recognized by his grandchildren, Emerson and Hudson White, and by his daughter, Miss White. Corporal Patterson. Corporal Patterson served 10 years in the United States Army and and served in World War II. He is recognized by Chloe Carroll. <coughs> Staff Sergeant Nicholas Petty. Staff Sergeant Petty is currently serving in his seventh year in the United States Army. He is recognized by Claire and Lily Gummings and Maryland Roy. Staff Sergeant Lonnie Poor. Staff Sergeant Poor currently serves in the United States Army. He is recognized by his niece, Remy Kate Batchelor. Frank Ross. Ross served in the United States Army. And Ross served in the United States Army and served during World War II. He is recognized by Dominic Maselli. Specialist Chris, Chris Reiner. Specialist Reiner served six years in the United States Army. He is served during the Iraqi Freedom and is recognized by his daughter, Abigail Reiner. Russ Cyber. Mr. Cyber served in the United States Army in World War II. He was recognized by, his, by Maggie Dyer. John Sigmundfeger. Mr. Sigmundfeger served seven years in the United States Army from 2002 through 2009 he, and served in the Operation Iraqi Freedom. He is, he is Jack Sigmundfeger's father, Paul Vandergriff. Vandergriff served four years in the United States Army, Air Force, and served in the Vietnam. He is Tucker Wilson's grandfather. Staff Sergeant Ethan Williams. Staff Sergeant Williams served 
in the United States Army from 2015 through 2022. He served in the war in Afghanistan. He is recognized by Carlston Lever. Leverton. Woods, David Woods, E4. Woods served eight years in the United States Army and served during Desert Storm. He is recognized by Gabe Klein. Staff Sergeant Marvin Yarp. Staff Sergeant Yarper served in the United States Army for eight years. He served in the Vietnam and is recognized by Logan Lighted. to have an extra special member of our school family with us this morning. Miss Mary Hammond is joining us to share a story about a special group of our veterans. Thank you. It's such an honor and a privilege to be back at Doris Elementary School. And I want to read the story to you about America's white table. It was just a little white table, but it brought tears of pride to my Uncle John's eyes. The Veterans Day, he came for dinner and stood by it, sat for one person even though nobody would be eating at it. It was just a little white table. But earlier that day, Mama had told Gretchen, Samantha, and me, the little table we were setting for Veterans Day was just like the ones that have stood across America in the dining halls of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force since the Vietnam War ended. The tables honor the men and women who serve in America's armed forces, especially those missing in action, our MIAs, and those held prisoner of war our POWs. It was just a little white table, but it, fe it felt as big as America when we helped Mama put each item on it, and she told us why it was so important. We use a small table, girls, she explained first, to show one soldier's lonely battle against many. We cover it with a white cloth to honor a soldier's pure heart when he answers his country's call to duty. We place a lemon slice and grains of salt on a plate to show a captive soldier's bitter fate and the tears of families waiting for loved ones to return, she continued. We push an empty chair to the table for the missing soldiers who are not here. We lay a black napkin for the sorrow of captivity and turn over a glass for the meal that won't be eaten, she said. We place a white candle for peace and finally a red rose in a vase tied with a red ribbon for the hope that all are missing will return someday. Mama finished speaking just as sunlight spilled over the table and filled 
the overturned glass. It was just a little white table. But it suddenly made me want to burst with a feeling I couldn't explain when Mama told us how much our setting the white table would mean to Uncle John that night. Then she told us something we did not know about our Uncle John. He, who gave us big bear hugs and spun us with airplane twirls and called me his Katie girl. Our Uncle John was a POW in Vietnam before we were even born. It was just a little white table, but it gave us the courage to ask Mama what happened to Uncle John when he, uh, in Vietnam, she quietly told us his story. When Uncle John served in Vietnam, he was sent out on a rescue mission and his helicopter was shot down behind enemy lines, she began. And he and his three crew members were taken prisoner. One crew member named Mike had serious wounds from the crash, but Uncle John and the other men turned to help Mike get better and persuaded a guard to bring Mike medicine. Then one day when a guard looked away, Uncle John and the others had a chance to escape but Mike was still too sick to go. So Uncle John stayed behind because he would not leave a fellow soldier alone so far from home. But how did Uncle John get free, we asked Mama. Sometime later, Uncle John had a chance to escape again, and somehow he was able to take Mike with him carrying him on his back and collecting just enough rainwater and big leaves to help them, uh, to keep them alive until Uncle John found an American men's infantry unit to help them. But even though Uncle John did everything he could to bring Mike home alive, Mike's wounds were just too serious and he died before the rescue helicopter landed. I know that Mike was only 20 years old, and I know that he dreamed of playing football, but he loved America enough to give his life for his country when duty called. And I know how much Uncle John loves America too, but he learned when helping Mike that a soldier risk his life for a fellow soldier because the very best of our country lives in every man and woman who would lay down their life for you too. It was just a little white table but it needed words of gratitude like Mama's Thanksgiving meal. So before Uncle John arrived for dinner, Gretchen and Samantha and I decided to put three gifts of our own on the table to honor our veterans. Gretchen colored pictures of all the objects on the table, and Samantha wrote out the words of my country, tis of thee, as a tribute in song. But I didn't know what I, a 10-year-old girl, could ever put on the table that was as important as each veteran's gift of freedom to me. It was just a little white table. But I looked at it all dinner long, and in the quiet inside me, I could almost hear the silent soldiers of the empty chair saying, remember us, 
please. We are real people like your Uncle John and Mike, who left families and friends, homes and dreams of our very own to protect your birthright of liberty from disappearing as easily as sunlight from a glass. It was just a little white table. But it took my words away when I hugged Uncle John goodnight and wanted to thank him for serving our country so bravely. So I just hugged him even harder and told him I loved him. Uncle John hugged me back even harder than I had hugged him. And that's when I knew what I could put on the table. My promise to put the words from my heart into a little book about America's White Table. And in the book, I'd use Gretchen's pictures and Samantha's songs and Mama's story about Uncle John and his friend Mike, because I hoped that everyone who reads the little book would set a white table on Veterans Day too. So the brave Americans, the little table honors, won't ever feel forgotten by the country they loved so much. Then, in the salt on the little white table, I traced in the grains of their family's tears what each man and woman who serves America is to me. And that is a hero. And that's when I saw the tears of pride fill my Uncle John's eyes. 